Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Tony Rowe in the 15-minute pool on ICC. Uh, Tony is a occasional student of mine, and <laughs> he says, uh, oh no, in the chat. Yeah, Tony is al also an um, avid follower of my channel, so this should be interesting. Let's tell him good luck. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he has also written a excellent book recently that I all I would recommend everyone check out. It's called The Killer Sicilian and it's a book on uh, the Kalashnikov Sicilian. So he's a uh, very accomplished theoretician, knows a lot about openings. So maybe I shouldn't go into a sharp line against him. <laughs> um, all right, so he's playing bishop g2. I'm going to take on c4. This is what I usually do in this line. He sent me another tell. I'm not going to tell you guys what he just said in the chat. <laughs> I just, I don't, it's nothing, nothing terrible, but um, I don't want it to affect the gameplay. Um, okay, so I'll play knight bd7 here. Uh, whatever, I can tell you. He, just, he said he's two beers in, and he never drinks. So <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Um, queen c2. So queen c2 is one of the moves, and... Uh, after this, I usually play knight b6. Just deciding if I want to do something else this time around. Uh, no, I'm going to play knight b6. This is the most normal move. And he plays knight a3, yep. So I, I usually like playing g6 in this position. Um, I played this position, I think, once over the board and several times in blitz. Tony's got a real healthy rating here. Um, really, really good rating. 2255. Just checking. I want to see his stats. Yeah, his queen c2 is the move. So his peak standard rating, peak 15 minute rating was 2368. So, yeah. Um, I'll play bishop g7 now. And when I've had this position previously, white usually plays uh, d3 and tries to go for uh, like a bishop move, bishop f4, for instance. Black is solid. I mean, the position is a little uninspiring for black in some ways, but I know this is, because uh, I play this line from uh, the white side sometimes, and I know this is a way black can try to equalize the play, really. So I'll castle now. Yeah, and Tony is a, a diehard English fan. So he's um, very knowledgeable about the English opening. Again, I was hesitant to go into anything too theoretical against him. But uh, who knows? <laughs> this is not too bad. This is just a position to play. E4, yeah. So against E4, like I already noticed like D4 is kind of weak. I might want to start maneuvering in a way to try to exploit that square. Like, if I could eliminate his um, knight and then plant, like, my knight on d4, if I could just jump it right there, that would be the best possible scenario. If I play bishop g4, though, he's probably going to play knight e5. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I like the look of that so much. So I'm kind of thinking I'll play a queen move right now, like queen a5, or maybe queen b6, but queen b6, he has bishop e3 with tempo, so not sure how thrilled I am about that move. I might save bishop g4 for later, I guess is what I'm saying. So queen a5 is probably a normal move. Pawn a5 also makes some sense, too. e4 is a little bit annoying in that I can't play knight e5. That's a move that black sometimes likes to play in order to transfer the knight over to the queen side. Um, hmm. a5 or queen a5? That's what I'm debating between right now. Queen a5 seems a little random. It's my only criticism of this move. If bishop d2, I'd have to figure out what to do with that piece. I don't know. I don't know how much I like queen a5. Could go rook c8, too. Maybe with some aspirations of playing c5. The other thing is, will he play d4 on the next move? He could. 
Hmm. Queen a5, d4. Yeah, I don't want to get too cramped of a position. You know, I've been leaning queen a5, so let's play that move. I do think there's a decent chance he'll play d4, though. Um, if he does, I'll probably put a rook on d8. I'll decide which rook when he plays that. But yeah, um, I don't mean to turn this into a plug for Tony's book, but um, he is a friend and student of mine, and I think he wrote an excellent book. And he spent a long, long time writing it. <laughs> he, he can confirm for himself, but I think it was something like three or four years writing this book, uh, The Killer Sicilian. And I know he he poured his heart and soul into it. And it's an entire repertoire book for Black. That's what I really like about it. Um, it's not just like solely about the Kalashnikov. It's about the Kalashnikov and all these other anti-Sicilians too. So it, it provides an entire repertoire for the Black side. So like that book. Um, here, h3, so he's ruling out a jump of one of my pieces to g4, most likely the bishop. I kind of want to go c5 in order to get counterplay on the d4 square, so he can't just like slowly squash me with uh, pawn to d4. So I'm leaning towards just playing c5. However, knight g5 makes me a bit nervous. Do I have grounds to be nervous about that? c5, knight g5, yeah, it's not... It's not completely obvious what I do there. Maybe I'll play rook f d8 first and just pressure his d pawn. Maybe I will do that. <clears throat> h6 could also come in handy. It is slightly weakening to play h6. Huh. No, I'm going to play just rook fd8 to start. Simple move. Not sure about the knight g5 idea. Could be good. Could be neutral. As of now, if knight g5, I'm thinking I'll just play bishop d7. Sort of ugly, but I don't see a refutation of that. Bishop c8 might even be playable. I had a feeling him and I were going to play because um, I was about to start my game and I saw he was uh, watching one of my games. <laughs> he was creeping on one of my blitz games, Tony was, so I figured there's a decent chance we might play. Uh, Bishop e3 is very sensible. Yeah, makes perfect sense. I think I might play h6 now just to secure the future of my uh, bishop on the e6 square. Yeah, let's do that. Plan for him now would be a3 and pawn to b4. Try to make that happen. Eventually, he'll want to do something with this a-pawn, because I do have two pieces aimed at it, the bishop and the queen. Of course, I'm not going to play bishop takes a2. That would put me in a pin. So I'll be biding my time a little bit. So here, I would expect him to play either e4 or a move like rook fd1. Maybe a3. One of those three moves. I might play rook a c8 and then again c5 if I get a chance, thinking that's a very legitimate goal for me. The only thing that makes me hesitate to play rook a c8 is if, if he's going d4, like how useful is my rook really going to be? on the C file. 
Because if he plays d4, presumably he's ruling out c5. So I may not have that uh, counterplay stroke coming. And in that case, I don't, I don't know that I want my rook on the c-file. Maybe if it's better off left on a8 for now. One knight maneuver I know is commonplace in this line is to go knight e8 and then put the knight on d6. So I do have that in my, up my sleeve if I want it. He could play knight d4 in this position too to attack my light square bishop, but somehow I don't think he's going to do that. It would be interesting because maybe he could go knight d4 and then if I were to move my bishop back, okay, well, <laughs> there we go. Um, he can go knight b3, I think is his idea, and maybe try to plant that knight on c5. So that's that's a pretty interesting plan, actually. Um, I was starting to appreciate it when he did it. Any tactics? Probably nothing to do in tactically. I am attacking that knight one time, but there's no discoveries I can make with my knight that are going to hurt him. Knight g4? Probably just takes on e6. I take e3. He takes, takes. Eh, yeah, that's not a good position for me. So I'm looking at moving my bishop. Bishop d7. Um, yeah, I don't really want my pawns to become messed up, so... Bishop d7 or bishop c8 will probably be played by me. Kind of thinking bishop c8 might be more accurate. Um, I don't know, though. If bishop c8 and then uh, knight b3, maybe I go queen a4 to try to mess with his plan of playing knight c5. Maybe that's the proper way to go about things. Yeah, let's go bishop c8. Kind of disconnecting my pieces by doing this, but I hope it's temporary. I'm thinking I won't have to deal with it for too long. Okay, queen a4 is interesting now, so I think I probably will do that. And actually with queen a4, I kind of introduced um, the idea of playing bishop e6 back and pinning him. So... He may have to deal with that. If I get a few moves, I'd love to do like bishop a6 and then knight d7 and swing my knight somewhere useful like e5. Don't think he'll allow me to do that, but... I could have played queen b5 on the previous move, attacking d3, but that seems a little superficial. You could just play rook fd1, not getting much. I also maybe could have swung my queen over to h5. I didn't even give that a ton of thought, but that, that might have been interesting, actually. Um, attacking h3. Yeah, I probably should have given that more thought. If g4, might maybe a sacrifice on g4. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah, that will be interesting to look at in analysis. analysis. I'll have to remember to look at that one. Didn't even occur to me at the time to play queen h5. This move is annoying enough, though. I feel I'll have decent chances. It may make sense for him just to defend his queen somehow. Like, play a rook to c1. He could even play rook a c1, because I'm not going to play queen takes a2. He has rook a1 back, trapping my queen in that case. So he can, he can probably do that if he wants. Like, say, rook a c1, if I play bishop a6 or bishop e6, rather. He goes knight c5. Um, again, queen takes a2 is too risky because he plays rook a1. So I would assume we swap queens on c2, and I have this problem on b7. I might even go directly back to c8 at that point. He has a problem on d3, minor problem. I might be a tiny bit worse in that resulting position. So if I were him, I'd probably play rook a c1 here. 
Nothing else looks as direct as that move. Could maybe move his queen like queen e2. It's probably an option. I kind of like the idea of playing b6 for me. So whatever he plays on the next move, play b6. And my queen does a good job of defending the c6 pawn. And maybe I can sneak my bishop out onto a new diagonal. Either b7 or a6, perhaps. Just using a lot of time here. I mean, rook a c1, I can't play b6. Because he could just take on c6. I mean, I mean, I might be able to do that because d3 hangs at the end, but it looks a little risky. I think that's all the more reason for him to play rook a c1 in this position. Maybe I'll go knight d7 in that case. We'll head for some trades. Plays d4, okay. It's a pretty principled move. Um, I can play bishop e6 as planned, trying to exploit the pin. Anything else look bothersome to him? I can play b6 as well. That's the other idea. So bishop e6, he'll probably play a rook to c1 again to renew that knight c5 threat. Then I could take on b3 and really strive to destroy his structure. I don't know. b6 strikes me as a very interesting move here. The bishop e6 is uh, also pretty logical. Hmm. So if bishop e6, rook a c1, I think I have to take his knight just right away at that point. And he's going to have double isolated pawns, but how big of a deal is that? He's got the two bishops and way more space. So bishop e6, while seemingly active, might just, um, might not really lead to much. And something like bishop e6, rook a c1, knight e7 just strikes me as a bit too passive. So I'm really thinking b6 is how I want to play this. Hmm. It's unusual. Let's do it. It's an interesting adjustment. I'm banking on my queen just being extremely annoying here. I mean, b6 makes sense from a positional perspective because it restricts his knight. I mean, his knight really wants to go to c5. He can't do that anymore. So, I'll have to decide where I want to put my bishop next move, b7 or a6, or maybe even e6 again. I guess I'm staying flexible with this piece. There's no reason I can't play bishop e6, if I deem that to be the best square. e5 is met by knight d5, so that doesn't concern me. Yeah, I have a feeling this game is going to be um, some sort of time scramble down the stretch. Tony, I'm sure you're very happy about the prospect of this turning into a time scramble. <laughs> I said that sarcastically. I don't think he's happy about that. Yeah, I think you should still play rook ac1. My opinion hasn't really changed over the last couple moves. Rook ac1 or maybe rook fd1. At some point he needs a rook on c1 to free his queen. Plays rook fc1, so maybe he's keeping this rook on the a pawn. He might be slightly concerned about that. Yeah, I think his next move will be knight d2. And he's going to offer a queen trade. I have to defend my c6 pawn, by the way. So, bishop b7 is indicated.
Bishop b7, knight d2. Say we swap the queens. Knight d7, maybe. You could play e5. e5 could be annoying. I think I'm slightly worse in that position. If that were to happen. I'm just trying to look for a way to solve my problems here. Just kind of... Bishop a6. What about bishop a6? That way if he goes knight d2, I can trade queens and then maybe play bishop d3. He takes c6. Oh no, that doesn't work at all. What am I talking about? Knight, the knight on d2 would further defend e4, so it's no good. Yeah, I think I'll just play bishop b7. I'm expecting knight d2. I could sack the exchange. Rook takes d4. It's probably not justified, though. Queen c4. Huh. wonder why he wants to trade on that square. So I thought you'd want to move your knight. Guess not, though. Hmm. I have to trade. Now maybe knight e8, but e5 is annoying. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The problem with knight e7 is he always plays e5 as soon as I do that. As soon as that move hits. Yeah, you know, my position's ever so cramped. I'm just going to go here. Just a normal move. He's going to play rook ac1. It's weird, because like I want my knight on f6, but I also want to maneuver it. That idea of e5 is just so annoying. I think I'm like slightly worse still. And he can kind of expand and hmm, place a4. Coming after me with the a pawn. So if I play bishop a6, where are you going to put that? Let's go bishop a6, see where he puts the rook. Because rook c2, I have bishop d3. So I may play bishop d3 next move. So you might want to go to c3, but that leaves open um, c5 possibilities. c5 take knight d7. Nah. Let's go knight d7 first. See how he responds to that. So I'm planning c5. That's all I want to do. If a5, I'll play bishop b5, is what I'm thinking. This is getting volatile. <laughs> Both very low on time. This is what happens when you play like someone you know sometimes. Like, I don't know. You tend to sit there thinking. Also, if they're thinking, um, it gives you justification to think yourself. I feel like if it's someone you don't know, you're not like trying to get inside their head or like understand how they play as much. You just play chess. 
but there's just a different dynamic to uh, someone you're more familiar with. That's a very interesting position. I am a little surprised by the way he played it uh, with a4. It might be a good idea, but I thought for sure he was just going to double his rooks up on the c-file because I didn't see a super active move for me in that case. This entire game I've been a little bit cramped. Nothing like hugely intolerable, but, you know, the cramp has been on for a while. I do like the fact that I have these dual pawn breaks brewing now, c5 or maybe maybe even e5. a5 would be very consistent for him if he played that here. But I'll put my bishop on b5. Both under two minutes. Mm. Not me, sorry. I have two minutes, 22 seconds. But still not very much time. You gotta move, Tony. Gotta do something. Yep, A5 as planned. We'll just quickly play that move, because he was threatening to take, so... That's what I wanted to do. You can play e5, but uh, and then I can play c5, and it, it's very messy. I don't know in whose favor. Rook a7, yep. I'll play c5, sure. Not even sure I'm, I want to take quite yet on d4. But nevertheless, I'll do that. So maybe he's trying to get in bishop h3? Hard to say. But e6 looks useful. Rook back, yeah. Maybe c4. Um, take on d4. If I take d4, he takes on c8. I take, he takes. That might be a little bit better for me. Nah, I can take with the knight, though. Hmm. go c4 and then maybe knight b8 is what I'm thinking to attack d4 hmm he says I like my chances of mating you in 19 seconds <laughs> touche Hmm. Rook b8. Do I really want to lose that? Okay, I'm just going to go here. I think there could have been a bunch of trades on uh on that on that d4 square. It would have been about equal. But this looks more interesting. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Let's go here. Oh, I'm hanging b6. That wasn't smart. Well, time scramble at the end. Um, okay. Just saying lucky win. <laughs> yeah, I think Tony was better for um, a good portion of this game.
like slightly better. I mean, he had a, uh, a more comfortable position, let's say. So the other move that is possible for white in this position is uh, a4. a4 is another line. So a4, black usually plays a5, and then knight a3. So it's, it'll be the same line with the inclusion of a4, a5. So knight a3, and then g6. We trade, and then bishop e6. Queen c2, bishop g7. Yeah, so this is interesting, going e4. Um, I had a game, I think bishop f4 was played in the game I'm thinking of. And there's also bishop d2, but I'm not too sure about e4. Um, I know I might have seen this move before, but I was not quite sure what to do. Engine says knight g4. Knight g4, trying to aim for e5 maybe, I guess. As I said, I'd love to eliminate this knight and try to work on the e5 and d4 squares. But if I go bishop g4, I mean, he can play knight e5 if he wants. So, this is apparently okay too. Yeah, I notice in this line that black's minor pieces are somewhat of an issue. He has this super solid structure, but the minor pieces can be a bother to uh, organize. Uh, yeah, so I played queen a5. This might be dubious. I don't know. Rook fd8. I was speculating that he could jump into g5, like knight g5. But um, I was just going to drop back like bishop d7 or bishop c8, one of the two. This all seemed very, you know, typical, let's say. Knight d4 was interesting. I think it was interesting that Tony tried that move. Because uh, he could play something really banal, right? Like rook fd1. But um, this is a, an interesting idea. So trying to come to b3. So bishop c8. I feel like this is a, a slightly better square than d7 because I'm not hugely interested in posting a rook on c8 anymore, I don't think. So um, I think bishop d7 kind of gets in the way of my rook. Also maybe deprives me of a knight d7 drop back. So knight d4, bishop c8. Now here, I really think I should have considered this queen h5 move. And I'll be curious what the engine thinks, but I was so intent on going queen a4, which is actually a good strategy against uh, knights on that square, stops the rook pawn from coming up. Um, I was so intent on doing that, I didn't even consider queen h5. But before I check what the engine has to say, so I'm double attacking h3. And if he plays g4, I might just sack, right? Like bishop takes g4, h takes g4, knight takes, and maybe this threat is something. I mean, he can move his rook and arguably defend. But it looks a little scary for him. I don't know. Um, he could play h4. But then my, I feel like my queen is like nicely nestled over here. Maybe I go g5. And try to pry open the h file after all. This would be a stark contrast to what happened in the game. So I wonder if queen, a, queen h5 is um, the best move here for black, according to the computer. It said for a second it was, then it changed its mind to my move, queen a4. Mm, now it's back to queen h5. Yeah, the computer says g4, and it doesn't like black sacrificing, so I'm thinking this is probably unsound. I mean, yeah, it gives this line I was just looking Check. at. In a 15-minute game, though, this, this is probably playable. The sacrifice completely changes the character of the game, right? Like now, White's not interested in any slow maneuvering plans. They're interested in, um, you know, king safety and simplifying <laughs> and trying to use their one point material advantage. So, um, yeah, Queen H5. I wish I would have at least thought about that. It was a mistake not to think about it. So, A4, um, he went D4. I played B6. Yeah, maybe bishop e6 is also okay. I just, I really thought he would do something normal like this. And get ready to play knight c5. So that's why I chose this b6 move. For all that creativity I displayed, <laughs> my position is still worse. Yeah, queen c4, maybe that was good. I, I was expecting knight d2. I thought he would do this and we would have this trade. Because I think long term, maybe, that knight is not so good on b3. He might want to maneuver it. And going to d2 is helpful because it defends e4 and, you know, it seems a little bit better than having it on b3. That said, I'm still worse after queen c4, so we traded. I played rook here. 
Yeah, and if I were him, I would have just played Rook AC1 really quick, because, uh, as I said, I, I don't think there's anything active that I can do, necessarily. Um, I don't think his move A4 is bad. On the contrary, I think it's probably a good move. Um, but it cost him some valuable time. Um, well, maybe not that much time. But um, this whole plan cost him some time. I think it, just from a time management standpoint, it would have been easier to double and basically see how black reacts. So it's just I'm really hard-pressed to do anything. Like here, I can actually move my bishop, whereas if rook ac1, I can't move my bishop because c6 hangs. So, I don't know. Maybe personal preference, but... So bishop a6. c5 is apparently something I should have considered too, but bishop a6 seemed normal. Rook c3, okay, he chose a good square. Knight d7. Yeah, so if ever e5 is played, <clears throat> that shuts out both my knight and my bishop. Now, huge distinction, right? Like, he doesn't want to play e5, and I had mentioned this in the game, he doesn't want to play e5 when I can just go knight d5, because uh, then my knight has a good square. But as soon as my knight goes to d7, then he's interested in playing the e5 move. Because it restricts that piece... Opens his bishop. No outpost square for the knight that I can get to easily. To conceivably get to d5, now I'd have to go like knight f8 to e6 to c7 to d5, which is probably totally unrealistic. So, yeah, maybe e5 was just a good move here. Um, I don't know what I would have played against that, actually. So I can't play bishop a6, I'm seeing. Or wait a second, did I play... Oh no, I'm sorry, I played bishop d7. I think I was just illustrating that with knight d7. Uh, and now here... Yeah, so if he had played e5 at this juncture, then I would have played c5 and just tried to explode the center. Even here, though, you can see the computer thinks he has good play. It gives the line a5. Uh, it was saying bishop b5 for a second, so let's go with that. Uh, d takes c5, b takes c5, and then f4. Still striving to keep this bishop out of play. Yeah. So where did he spend all the time? It was, um, I think it was right here, actually. Knight d7. Yeah, that, that killed him. That two-minute think right here over a5. Yeah, two, and, two minutes and change. Two minutes and 20 seconds. Um, yeah, otherwise, I mean, if he plays a quick move here, I'm, I'm still probably slightly worse, and you know, he has a time advantage. Let's say he decides to move by uh, the time he has three minutes. You know, if he plays something normal like rook ac1, I have two minutes 20 with a worse position. He's got three. He's in good shape. Anything could happen still, but yeah, that two-minute think really killed him because now I have almost double his time. And uh, I just kind of rapid-fired some moves, and I knew I wasn't better, but the time is, is huge here. Yeah, here, e6. Um, I thought about just taking on d4 to simplify, but I thought after take, take, and then knight takes, he, he maintained a small advantage. This is a little bit annoying. My bishop being attacked and having to guard this, it would have forced me to part with my dark square bishop, and uh, yeah, he's better here. Two bishops, good rook on the seventh rank. Decent king safety, no problems there, so. So that's why I played c4. Um, here, yeah, and like I said, I know I'm not better in this position. Um, actually, in a tournament game, I probably would just shut it down and take on d4 and, you know, do something like this and just play for equality, basically. But um, with him having less than 10 seconds left, and you know, I want to do something to make him think. So Rook b8. Yeah, he played very well, though, throughout this game. I think this is a game that... Uh, you can be be pretty happy with Tony, all things considered. The chess was fine. It's just uh, yeah, the time at the end was the issue. Yeah, now you're like better. I know you wouldn't play Bishop C5 normally, so yeah. And white flags. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And thanks to uh, Tony Rotella, my opponent. Uh, go check out his book because it's awesome. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Please leave me any feedback in the comments on this one, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.